This is Whiskey Whereabouts. I'm Tim, and today we're talking Tamdu. I'm going to review this Tamdu 12 year. Tamdus are all sherry matured, but what if they weren't? I'm also going to compare this whiskey to a single cask that was matured in a bourbon cask with no sherry influence. It all starts right now. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here with you on Whiskey Whereabouts. So while this pour finishes breathing, I usually don't talk about packaging much on the channel, but I left this box out just so I could point out how much I hate these Tamzu boxes. Uh, they have these big, huge holes cut into the side, so they're pretty much useless, and they just want to display the bottle. The bottle looks fine on its own, just put the bottle on the shelf. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk about this Tamdu 12 year, which is sort of good news and bad news. It's not a perfect presentation. We have a 43% ABV whiskey here that is chill filtered. It does have natural color, which is nice. Could be a much better presentation. It is matured exclusively in cherry casks. They are both American and European oak casks. We have first fill and refill all Oloroso sherry casks. And Tamdu has sort of emerged as a go-to distillery for this style of whiskey, especially for this whiskey's older brothers that are better presented, a little richer. They have a pretty formidable cask strength whiskey that I reviewed on the channel previously. I'll put the link up here if you haven't seen that one. But uh, in this case, we have the sort of entry level Tamdu, and despite the presentation, we're going to see how good it is, and then I'm going to compare it to an alternative independent bottled Tamdu that doesn't have the sherry influence. So let's start here on the nose with the 12 year. It's a nice nose. It's not overpowering, but it doesn't it doesn't feel thin. And all these sort of very familiar sherry flavors are here. So we have the orange, we have the brown sugar. There is the raisin, but there's also a really rich kind of chocolatey element that we're gonna see throughout the whiskey, but it's definitely present here. A cocoa powder type of chocolate element on the nose. Pretty inviting, very sort of sherry, very sweet. Let's see how the palate presents. It's an okay mouthfeel for 43%. It doesn't really taste super thin. It has a real almost chocolate milk vibe to it. The orange is definitely there. There's a little bit of the oak, a little bit bitter from the wood. The raisin is definitely there. It's not hot, but it's not nothing either. There is a nice little light dusting of sort of black pepper. It's all sort of wrapped up in this medium. It's it's brown sugar, sort of a little thin, not, not super thick or, or condensed, but syrupy. It's nice. It's nice on the palate. It doesn't knock you over, but there's just enough of a little bit of the liveliness with the sort of heat, a little bit of the, the oak to sort of moderate some of that sweet uh, influence. It, it, it drinks better than the specs. It's not as weak as we might fear from that ABV. Now we're going in on the finish. Fairly light finish, but a solidly medium finish with some, with some aftershocks. It is very raisiny. Um, that as it sort of develops on arrival, you get the raisin, you've got the chocolate. There's something else, it's almost like a, a mintiness, like a, a, a mint herb, you know, garden mint. As it sort of develops after that sort of first wave, what you're left with is sort of a dark chocolate, a coffee bean maybe, uh, on the tongue, bringing in a little bit of that bitter, and a little, t uh, the ghost of the little bit of heat along kind of the sides, along the cheeks. Um, pretty pleasant. It's not sickly sweet. It's not monotonous. There are some of those offsetting sort of bitter notes. are very complimentary. The sort of rich uh, sweetness, that sort of chocolatey uh, sweetness. So it's, it's a very drinkable whiskey for this style. I really don't have any complaints yet about this whiskey. I have one, it's coming up, but as this style of whiskey goes, uh, it's punching above its weight. You know, it, it's, it's, it is presenting better than 43% chill filtered sort of whiskey might be expected 
two, a very solid entry among that sort of uh, similarly compromised, you know, presentation on the Glendronic entry level, and it's sort of an alternative to that sort of McAllen 12 um, type of space. This is rich as compared to these other um, 43% whiskeys, entry level whiskeys in that space. Now, I've already done this, and I'm just gonna tell you it's a bad idea, but I'm going to hit it with the water and I'm gonna give it a second and then go in, but I'm gonna tell you now that you don't need to add any water to this whiskey as you might expect given the presentation. It's really washed out the nose and it's it's not doing it any favors. The palate is Hershey syrup now. It, it's just it, it diluted. Everything else is washed out. There really isn't anything there. On the finish, um, there is that sweetness. We've lost a little bit of those offsetting flavors. You you have none of the heat, none of the heat on the tongue, nothing on the sides of the mouth like I was talking about on the finish. We don't really need the water, but I tried it so you don't have to, and it's really not unlocking anything else. This is a whiskey that does not need water. I have been asked to present my ratings uh, of the whiskeys independent of the value aspect, because I do factor in value into the rating. So uh, I can do that, that's not a problem. And I will say that this whiskey is probably a very solid four glass whiskey, independent of any considerations for the price, just sort of on the way that it presents. That is neat, obviously, um, but it is significantly overpriced. And I would say overpriced by 10 to $15, depending on uh, what you're paying for it. So I'm gonna take it down to an overall rating that factors in value to three and a half glasses. And that's where we're gonna come out. But I did say we were going to talk about Tamdu. And I just wanna take this opportunity to sort of pair this whiskey against an independently bottled Tamdu that I have from my recent Malt Madness Tournament. If you haven't seen the second episode, the Red Deer Group episode, I'll put the link up here, you can check it out. Um, it, it featured this whiskey, which is an independently bottled Tamdu. It is a 15 year single cask. It's 48.4% and it was aged in a refill hogshead. So we have Tamdu without the sherry influence. So going back to this whiskey, um, the single cask bourbon matured, quite a difference on the nose, okay? Gone is all of that sherry sort of influence of raisins and the, and the sort of orange and the brown sugar. It is still sweet. This is very apple-y. And you know, we've got a space side sort of whiskey here that, that checks out, right? We're gonna be kind of picking up maybe some of the flavors from the distillate rather than that sherry cask influence. Chocolate sweet though is still there. And something that's a little nutty and sort of sticky to it. Again, a very nice nose. We've got more time in the cask here. We have a properly presented whiskey, no chill filtered, 48.4%. Um, and it shows on the nose, right? But we're getting those different notes. But that chocolate element carries over from both whiskeys. When I go back to the 12 year, that's a very strong influence among everything else that's going on here. I'm gonna go back and go in on the palette on the single cast Tamdu. It is a lot hotter on the finish, but on the palette, the mouthfeel, the heat is pretty comparable. Um, you're still really getting that chocolate element. What I'm getting very little of from this whiskey is some of the more bitter elements, and some of the obvious sherry stuff. And the 12 year is standing up pretty nicely to this whiskey, despite its disadvantages. And again, punching above its weight. I'm pretty impressed uh, with it, especially head to head with this pretty decent um, single cask Tamdu. But what is really coming out is the dimensions, I think, that we're getting from the sherry cask paired with the spirit is pretty complimentary, whereas this one is pretty straight forward, especially on the palate. What's there is rich. There's not a lot of notes sort of being played over here. And it's telling me that the sherry is bringing a lot of dimension to the standard Tamdu. 
It's a totally different spirit experience on the finish of this whiskey. It's buttery, floral. It is hotter than this and hotter than any of the other stages of this whiskey. This is uh, a better presented whiskey across the board. This one really stands up to it. And if I were sitting sort of absently sipping a whiskey very casually, I'd probably reach for this one with that sort of welcoming sweetness. This does have a very nice finish. It's bringing in some some more complex notes than is at the other stages of the whiskey, and it's and it's much hotter. This this makes it this one so much more sippable. Uh, but obviously, Tim D knows what they're doing with the sherry casks are an important part of the process. And if you enjoyed this comparison and this journey, um, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. You can uh, press this big button. It's going to pop up right over here so you don't miss any of the videos that are coming in the future. I'll see you on the next one.